so gaps. Uh, very quickly, we thought that there was a lack of gender-specific skills um, among donors, but also others. So um, we talked about a lack of skills to do analysis, but also a lack of skills in terms of to be able to do programming. Um, so for example, the kitchen garden example where um, you know, some people might do kitchen gardens for women's activity because they think it's a good program. Okay, put them up one more time and look around. Pretty strong agreement with some disagreement and some uncertainty. And, so, and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna make a little note here. Oh, the delta, so this, this, this is, but there's some of those. Okay, then we'll come back to it. Go ahead. Okay, and then we talked about a lack of evidence and a lack of arguments. So in evidence, we talked about um, um, lack of uh, gender disaggregated data, um, data um, that would support our programming essentially. Um, and also we talk about a lack of arguments. So for example, we don't really have the economic arguments put together of, in specific cases of why women's economic empowerment is a good idea or gender equality is a good idea. And land, um, la access to land, women's access to land was one example. I need to do a better job. A little more diversity, <laughs> a little more diversity, more yellow, so, okay. okay. Okay, you guys think we have enough data, enough arguments? <laughs> no? Can you, can you what? Can we ask? You're to accept. <laughs> We're gonna come back to the ones that have, oh. One second, one second, wait for the mic. We gotta capture this. But I'm gonna ask you to be very succinct. Yes. When we said that we lack results and evidence, it's probably we like to have it packaged and presented in a better way. I don't know if, does that capture it or am I misinterpreting what we discussed? Yep, yep. Okay, fair, fair elaboration. Okay, great, onward. Okay, finally for the gaps, we talked about, um, and we, we struggled with what this was called, and in the end we called it the framework. And what we were talking about was, um, as donors we often face challenges in terms of the legal framework of the country, the policy environment, the institutional factors, cultural issues. Um, and so, you know, for example, about women's access to land, women's access to other productive resources, women's access to credit, um, all of that is about that whole legal, institutional, cultural issue. Um, and that was a big gap. That's a big That's set a of gaps. Big okay. set, set of gaps. It's a whole family of them. Okay. Green and yellow again. Slightly more green, I'm not being scientific, okay? Okay, opportunities. Um, opportunities, so we debated a bit about whether or not we just wanted to take this and use the log frame approach and just flip them over. <laughs> and we decided that no, we were actually wanting to be more, um, we wanted to do something different. We talked about the fact that as a global donor platform, we should actually um, perform some kind of coordination role where we can actually coordinate in terms of um, learning, in terms of you know, sharing ideas and other things, um, but mainly about learning and, and, uh, um, from our existing programs. Okay. Whoa. We also did talk about how there are other coordination platforms around already as well. So the next one is about, uh, we called it joint research and action. And um, we, we spoke a bit about the fact that, you know, as the platform, we actually have the opportunity to commission maybe studies or a meta-analysis as to what actually works. Um, we did talk a bit around the fact that um, We've, we've been doing this kind of work for decades, and um, there's 
clearly something that doesn't work very well and maybe we need more innovation, maybe we don't, maybe we just need to do it better, but maybe we actually just need to also um, learn more about where, where we, we are perhaps repeating mistakes. And we also talked about joint action, which is about the advocacy side. Um, oh, you, you, you started putting a suitcase full of things here. Yeah, but, but I mean, let, let's just summarize this as, as mainly research. There's people in the group. Maybe. Oh, you get a little more mixture there. Um, and finally, we, we talked about the need to address this framework issue, um, and we talked about policy reform. Um, there was some conversation around the fact that we are in um, a unique situation at the moment where uh, we can use maybe post-2015 indicators to, and, and link them with women's economic empowerment. Um, and use this as an opportunity to um, have joint advocacy. So uh, an example that was given was, okay, if country X, for example, has got a lot of challenges to women's economic empowerment in, in agriculture, um, you know, perhaps it's something that we can do to go to them as the jo global donor platform and say, you know, these are examples of ways that Things can change. In so, like, exert joint the, yeah, influence. Joint influence. I mean, the platform is one opportunity to do that, but there, are, I mean, there are other pla other platforms as well. And we also talked about joint policy priorities, but I can't remember what that means. Just when I think it's all one color, then the second wave starts putting up their colors, and it gets more diverse. So this is an entry. He's got all three of them. Okay, so that's. That was, again, a little bit harder to discern. <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. Okay, so um, what I'd like to do is move through all four and then pick up on anything that really pushes your button, so to speak. So next we have yellow. Here she comes. Thank you. So actually, I think there's some um, overlap already to an extent between what we talked about and the other group, which is quite nice, I and guess, that's for, useful to notice, yeah, for our um, joint understanding. And the first thing we talked about is a lack of, as has been discussed a lot today, um, really understanding the context that women are living in and their own knowledge. Um, sort of in between those it, two. I think, I think it was really trying to draw on, on existing sort of understandings of, of um, how to manage crops, these, this type of uh, knowledge that we don't necessarily fully draw on. Um, okay. Well, somehow I think we had more yellow this time than we did over here. Okay. Okay. Um, and then we actually thought there was a bit of a tension here because on the one hand we really want to understand context in different places and so on but we also think you don't need to always every time reinvent the wheel and there are some lessons that we can learn through you know a better sharing process and the word we had in particular was meta-analysis um, and exchange of knowledge via this type of platform so again mapping on pretty much And finally, just this issue of political leadership, which is lacking uh, in many, many countries, and we see that as a really big problem. Political leadership yeah, at the country at level? at the country okay. level. I think that's an important distinction. Because when I saw it, I wondered if it was political leadership from these organizations. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, yeah, the green, green, and then some. A couple of key dissenters there, okay? <laughs> Okay. And then we did actually try to somehow map these together to work out, you know, what can we really do to um, channel the, the opportunities into filling these gaps. And um, we really thought that use of agricultural 
uh, by diversity, in particular existing knowledge um, that women do have themselves, for example, is a great opportunity um, for nutrition, for food security, um, and also for, there was a third one, okay. climate change, climate change adaptation, might maintain in you know, a support for climate resilience and so on. Um, and we thought this is somewhere where we can hopefully try to map together an understanding of um, what people already know with, and I'm going to go down to the third point here. Okay. Hold on one oh, sorry. Let's check on biodiversity. <laughs> okay, the yellow is gaining on the green there almost. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I will go to the third point because it relates a little bit more to this one, but we thought. Um, in the same sense that we're trying to uh, find this nexus between what can we learn from context and what can we really use from our own knowledge, we think education and capacity building amongst women is really important to realize these opportunities that we see for agricultural biodiversity. Okay, green and yellow. Was there any reds there? That was the first one with no reds whatsoever. Interesting. And um, finally, um, I mean, mapping onto this lack of political leadership, we sort of know that it's not a perfect solution, but we're trying to look for opportunities that can really foster collective action at community level and hopefully creating a dialogue that moves a bit upwards into national policy. Yes. Okay, I see a lot of people not putting their hands up, so that always makes me wonder, like, do you understand what she meant? Ground up political action. Policy, dialogue. Community, collective. based, collection. Okay, let's put them up one more time. Green, yellow, red, okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, moving on to red. Speaking of red, it means nothing in signification here. It's the color the uh, stickers were. Um, we in the red group, we talked a lot <laughs> and uh, talking about uh, herding cats it was yeah meow meow yeah um, the first cap we sensed there was a, a lot of talk should we talk about enabling environment or is it really governance issue and we ended up we said with the the problem facing women and in food systems is a lack of inclusive governance that is stimulating their progress. So that is, was the big, big one. Lack of inclusive governance. Wow. Okay, we have two, three yellows in the rest green. Mm. So far that's our strongest green. And the second one was really the pri uh, prioritization, prioritization and ownership that really people, both at donors and at local level governments, they really need to put their act together and prioritize and put the actions, the, the right actions first. Prioritization of Okay, a little more Not yellow, but lots yeah, of green. Yeah. And then, when you get close to the women, and it's really lack of resources that is hampering them. When we, some of us wanted to just put finance, but it's more than that. It's also the right kind of education. But finance is a big part. It's really a lack of those resources that they need. And, and lack of financial resources, did I hear you prioritize that or not? We talked a lot, and then the education is a big part, and correct okay. education, so it, it's, but finances is, is, is a big part, yes. Okay. No red ones, at least? No red ones again. Uh -huh. And then we didn't really have much time for the opportunities, but we, <laughs> but we had a very good point: is support concrete actions, walk the talk. 
I'm curious whether there'll be any red for that. Ah, there's a red for that. Okay. That's interesting. Mm. Were you being provocative or just, you know, you really think there shouldn't support concrete action? Ah, yeah. ah so that prioritization thing again. Yeah, yeah, of course. And then we, when we talk about nutrition in this aspect, we had people that are recently going from being a recipient to being a donor, and we really need to think about if we are mirroring our own consumer patterns over to some other societies, and we might need to study the consumer patterns and behaviors when we talk about food security and nutrition in developing countries. Do you mean exporting our bad habits? Yeah. Okay. We might be doing that sometimes. Yeah. I see some hands not up. I'm just kind of no. It's an uh, opportunity is to study, okay, you know, these these uh, links, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, one more. Yeah, we think that it's opportune to bring some more integrated value systems into play, that you link things better. You know, I'm really interested. There's some people who use red cards a lot. It'd be really interesting <laughs> to debrief this, okay? He was, he was in the group, or you green. know? Yeah, it's, it's very interesting. He was in the group, and put, he was... Put, put, put your cards up again and look at your colleagues. Pay attention to what your colleagues are doing. That's the opportunity here. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, now we go on to blue, which is intriguing me because the chart is empty. So this is like very juicy. That's right. We talked a lot. <laughs> so, um, no, oh, we don't, we don't they're doing the reveal. No, 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 we're not going to show you everything, I promise. Yeah, we can do that. <laughs> oh! no, no. This, is, this is very positive because we have, um, I will say what's different is that we tried to be quite specific. So, um, to identify the gaps, uh, the first um, is women's limited access and recognition, um, and we were really looking at the determinants of food production as well as consumption decisions. So, um, uh, that's the first problem or lack. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> So the second gap was that private sector approaches are underutilized and not gender sensitive. Present company accepted, right? Naturally. <laughs> okay. Was there any reds on that one? I didn't see any reds, but okay. <laughs> So the third is that uh, we really need value chains to be inclusive of sort of women's needs, but they need to be market-based to be scaled up. Okay, lots of green, a few yellow, and a red. Uh, so we identified, we distilled all of our hard work um, down to two opportunity areas. So one is um, that we need to, or we can, ensure gender-sensitive approaches across the program portfolio. That's what we want donors to do. And examples of this are gender analysis to understand barriers for women, um, to encourage civil society engagement and consumer organization engagement, as well as farmer organizations. You've moved to yellow. <laughs> <laughs> so mostly green. And a, just a little yellow. So the, the, um, the second opportunity really spoke to our second and third gaps. And that is that we really want to increase effective um, partnerships. So we're talking about public-private type partnerships. They need to be local, regional, international. And we want them to use uh, uh, market-based approaches for example, there's opportunities for health, nutrition, and agriculture partnerships. 
There's opportunities to leverage um, uh, information, communication technologies uh, for women, for example, for market uh, information and behavior change messaging. So those were, um, we really want effective partnerships. Okay, hold and, on one second. Yeah. And, no, no, it's okay. I just want to provide a short bonus round. The bonus <laughs> round. So um, where we started off was um, we tried to get onto the same page about what a food system meant, so to put our conversation in context. And we felt that that was really the purpose of the food system is to deliver food and nutrition. It needs to be good quality as well as sufficient quantity. Agriculture feeds in and um, it has a big impact on health. And uh, the system itself are the institutions and actors that make this possible. So it's everybody from farmers and um, scientists, households, markets, policymakers, etc. Would the um, environment be part of the system? Uh, yes, absolutely. I mean, sort of, it's all those pieces. So we just wanted to put our, we felt it was quite important to put our dialogue in the context of um, the overall food system and how, how that works for women and how women's empowerment engages within that system. Okay. What do you think about their definition? Okay. So some, some, definitely some appreciation for there. So um, I'm going to, have you ever heard about private conversations in public? I'm going to do a private conversation in public. I'm going to have a conversation with two people. So we had invited, and we have invited, Duncan and Estherine to just reflect on what they heard. And I was going to do that after some conversation, but my intuition is to let you two comment, because you may actually distill a number of things. Thank you. I, I think this has really been a very interesting session and really illuminating in, in the, the variety of issues that have come um, from the working groups. Um, but I, my interpretation of the session was that you want to hear from us what the global donor um, platform should focus on um, and how it can use its membership to do things on the ground. So I, I will start by saying that the, the good news is that what I've heard is everybody is in agreement that we need action. Um, but the difference is, I think the actions are different levels. So we are seeing actions that are really like micro, micro level, and we are seeing the macro level actions. Um, in my view, I think that as a global donor platform, um, you have a wonderful opportunity to influence issues at a strategic level um, in your ability to engage in platforms um, at the international um, um, level, but also engagement with governments. Um, I think also that the other platforms where development partners meet, and you have to make a difference. What do you want to be like? Are you like the other ones? What is your value addition? And in my view, I think that value addition should be picking on substantive issues and supporting them. And that does not mean that the global donor platform is the one implementing those issues, but you are working with institutions to be able to deliver on those substantive issues. So, for instance, you could support the work that FAO is doing, you could support the work that NEPAD is doing, like the program that we presented yesterday. So, as a group, and somebody used that word, joint action, as a group you can endorse an idea and a program and, and support it. Um, on the issue itself, the subject that we are discussing today, I think we should step back and look at this gender empowerment, um, not just as an issue of agriculture, but an issue of rural transformation and development. And I think if we place that in that context, we can each, um, address the critical issues that is all about equity, right, and justice for women, um, participation in the economic life of their countries. So if we look at it from that perspective, then we should be supporting issues of governance 
at all levels. So political governance that encourages participation, um, governance at the level of the communities, um, we heard a lot about the role of traditional leadership. So bridging that and, and providing those linkages between political and, and traditional systems, I think is important, particularly for, in the, I'm speaking as an African. From an African perspective, it is very important that we make those linkages and support um, the, the, the creation of space where we can have active dialogue amongst the different um, stakeholders and players in the community. For me, the focus is about um, communities because that is the space where any empowerment of women um, will make sense. And to also make the point that uh, when we talk about empowerment, my, I would like to say, as Monique said earlier, African women have a lot of knowledge and they have a lot of power, I can assure you that. It's not seen up front, um, but behind the scenes, they really have a lot of power. What we are talking about is capacitating, helping them, creating the space that they can express themselves better, they can use that power better, and they can deliver um, for their communities, well, for their families, for their communities, for, for their nation. So. Um, I think empowerment, that word is very good, but I think women have power. What women need is to get that space to be expressed, that power that they have, the potential that they have, and for that to happen, let's look at the gov governance systems that are there, let's look at the support in terms of policies. Um, yesterday we spoke about positive discriminatory policies those policies that can help empower these women to, whether it's participating in the market, whether it's taking goods to the market, whether it's addressing the issue of post-harvest laws. Let's look at that. I, 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 I always remember um, some years ago when I used to work in WWF, we visited a project on the field and we were working on a bushmeat project telling communities not to eat bushmeat. Um, and the, the lady whom we spoke to, she said to me, you know, my daughter, I'm, I'm really glad that you, you people are here. Um, and I would like to have a daughter like you, who have gone to school and can go and, and say this thing. But I have all these crops I grow here, the plant things. I cannot take it to the market because there are no roads. I don't have access to grow my small uh, resources to grow my small businesses because I don't have uh, 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 um, collaterals to get credit. So we know the issues. I would just like to leave this conversation to say we also know some of the solutions. The issue of how do we deliver on those solutions. So actions, 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 and let's think about the best mechanism to deliver on the solutions that we know are there um, and look for experiences in other places that have some solutions and bring them to our communities so that um, they can either adopt them, replicate them, but um, work collectively and move forward. I, yesterday I used the word, we are, you know, kind of in a seesaw position, going up and down, but we are not moving. Let's move. And I'm appealing to this group because, again, I said in Paris, I'm not sure I have an opportunity to address you again. So now that I have, I have to say what I think. Please, this is a wonderful and excellent platform. Use it for positive change so that you can realize, you know, look back and say, I help make a difference in the life of an African woman, in the life of a community, in the life of a nation. Thank you. Okay, well, I, I don't know how I can follow that. Is, that. is this, can you hear me? Yeah. Like that. Oh, wow. It gets louder if you pull it away. <laughs> 
Okay, so I'm Duncan Pruitt. I'm, I work for uh, Oxfam and I'm in the process not of deliver, de developing a gender program but our global land program. Uh, so I'm, to a certain extent, I would say I'm not a specialist. Uh, what I did to try to prepare for this session was I, I came up with a kind of scorecard. Um, so I tried a sort of technical approach um, to, of the issues which, which I kind of partly on behalf of Oxfam but partly on behalf of myself and what I was looking for, I could grade, grade the, the, what came back from the working groups just to give a personal perspective. That was what I was encouraged to do. And so I'm going to start with a bit which made me feel a little bit less comfortable when I heard back from the working groups. Um, I got, I've written a list. More evidence, context analysis, more knowledge, education, gender skills, policy reform, sharing information and coordination, resources needed, concrete action, unspecified. So there's nothing wrong with that list, but it's remarkably general and remarkably unspecific. Um, and I, I don't th it doesn't feel to me like it reflects the, the expertise and the progressive stuff that we've been hearing through the rest of the day. Um, so at the risk of being unpopular, I, I just, I wonder why we couldn't come out with a, with a clearer agenda for action uh, or why, the, why, why there's so many things which, which sound a bit woolly. I mean, these are obviously fine things to do, um, but I, I don't know. I, I wonder whether that, why isn't there more convergence on specifics? Um, so that's a, that's a question back to people. I, I don't know the answer, but I also listen to the different groups. Oh, I see a green card there. I'm not asking for votes at this stage. <laughs> But I'm going to go through my list. I, I came up with six factors that I, of things I was looking for coming back from the working groups and just t tell you a little bit about those things. So the, the one I th was at the top of my list was, these are, actually it's not in order of importance, but the, the first thing was uh, increasing the political voice of women. And that, that came up a little bit earlier in the day. It did come back from, I think the, I saw it in the red and yellow groups um, mentioning that. So I was uh, pleased to see that there. Um, but, but actually, for, for us, that's really central because, it, because you want to support um, demand, the demands of women themselves to, to ask for what they want. It's probably hidden in some of those general things. The second one is changing social norms through change of attitudes and beliefs. And there were some references today to use of media and uh, uh, celebrities and things like that. Um, but it didn't come back very much, I thought, in the working groups. And I wonder whether we shouldn't be really being more ambitious here to think about how to change things. And there's plenty of examples of great stuff happening there. And uh, to plug Oxfam, we've, we've, we've uh, developed a sort of docu-soap, for instance, in Tanzania called Female Food Heroes, which, which follows uh, a group of, of uh, women through a, a whole range of issues that they face, and the public voted for, the, for their hero and their, or heroine. And the, the heroine actually used the prize money to buy land, by the way. So a plug for the land program. But there's, there are a lot of examples like this which are out there. Um, but the, I didn't see it coming back. The next one was uh, this thing, creating an en enabling environment. Now, of course, that's a bit of a dull conce concept. But, um, we've got a paper outside called Meaningful Action, which is, which is uh, I don't think it's massively radical. But I think that we, along with many others, have already worked out what, what an enabling environment should be. So do we really need to work it out all over again? We should just be um, prioritizing it. But it, did, it maybe came back like in one group, maybe in the green group. Um, now, I would say that um, in strengthening women's land rights is an important one. A lot of people have mentioned it during the day here. Obviously, I'm going to mention it because that's the program I'm promoting. Um, in the, the 35 or so countries where Oxfam has uh, land programming, uh, strengthening women's land rights is nearly always um, a key component of it. Um, and, and it would be, we believe that that's really a key way of empowering women. And it would be great if that was taken up or looked at more closely by, by the platform. And I, I think it came back a little bit, maybe from one of the groups. 
then I've written, companies take a systemic approach to gender. And I did see the green and blue groups refer referring to this. I got, is that two minutes? Oh, that's okay. I can do that. Um, yeah, so you all know, or well, many of you will know that Oxfam's run a campaign to challenge the food and beverage companies, the biggest ones in the world, to tackle issues like land and gender and, and climate. And uh, the biggest companies in the world, the, the ones that are sourcing a lot of the commodities that are being uh, 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 exported from developing countries, uh, are very, very far behind in this area. And they... It's not a question of yet of whether they've put in systems, in, although we heard some great examples today, in most cases it's about whether they have yet understand, understood and analyzed these issues in their own supply chains. So, and there are some big ones that have now made commitments on this, like Nestle and Mars and Mondelez, um, but there's a long way to go. For, at the moment we're still at the level of uh, commitment, and it really needs to be turned into action. Um, so. There's a lot more to be done in that area. And finally, I, and I know it, someone mentioned it earlier today, making promoting women's land rights or women's rights explicit in any program design. How is this program going to promote uh, women's rights? That's you know, a, a central thing. I, I didn't really hear it coming back here, but I would have thought that it would be a relatively obvious one for, for donors to take up. Because, because our experience is that by making it explicit, then you get better outcomes, which, which uh, more equitable outcomes in, in the end. Um, okay, I've got two things and then I'm going to stop, right? So, one thing I felt slightly uncomfortable about, but it's also something that Oxfam struggles with, is the issue of influencing. That some, one of the groups mentioned about the need to influence uh, developing country governments. Um, Oxfam does this too, you know, we're also lobbying and, and, and directly trying to convince developing country governments, but I think that it, it has to be done in parallel at least, or taking into account uh, uh, the aspirations and the demands of, of the people in those countries themselves. I mean, obviously you take into account what the governments want, but let's be frank, we also need to support the voice of the populations, and I hope that um, uh, as a donor group you think about ways to support um, uh, women's the, uh, efforts to uh, find their own voice and claim their own rights. So I'll, I'll raise that one again. And then I'm going to, my last point is about something which my colleague Laura from, uh, Laura from the Slow Food uh, mentioned this morning, is the, that there's a big systemic challenge here. That even e with all of these in, in initiatives and programs that, that the donor group can um, set up and, uh, and, and put into, in, into, into process, that, that you, that they may not actually challenge the bigger systemic issues that are on the table. And, and I don't know how the donor group tackles it, so it's a, a no, another dilemma for us all. Um, if the dominant model in agriculture remains large-scale, land-intensive um, investments around the world, these are, inv these are uh, a model which generally takes women's land away um, and it's a model which tends to uh, give women low paid, low quality jobs. If that is the predominant model which, which all the political elites support, then how, how are these programs that we're going to do going to end up challenging um, that major challenge to women's economic empowerment? So that's a, a challenge which I'd like the donor group to think about too. Thanks very much. Sorry for talking so long. Thank you very much.